Welcome back. Uh, the President, uh, Muhammad Buhari, met with uh, the governors of the All Progressives Congress on Tuesday ahead of the party's convention. The President's Special Advisor on Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshin, amid the outcome of the meeting known in a statement titled, We Must Show Positive Qualities of APC at Our Convention, President Buhari Charges Governors. Now, during the meeting held at the State House in Abuja, Buhari told the governors that decisions that would enable the party to retain power at the center should be taken. The meeting came amid speculations of the party, uh, the president, may anoint an aspirant before the convention. Well, Buhari told the governors in a 12-point statement that parties, quote, parties globally have always relied on their internal cohesion and a strong leadership brand to achieve bigger electoral fortunes. He said, quote, in pursuit of the foregoing objectives, the party has successfully established internal policies that promote continuity and smooth succession plans, even at the state and local government levels. Now, he went on to say, quote, for example, the first time governors who have served credibly, where have been credibly well, have been encouraged to stand for re-election. Similarly, second term governors have been accorded the privilege of promoting successes that are capable of driving their visions as well as the ideals of the party. The president continued, quote, as we approach the convention, I appeal to all of you to allow our interests converge our focus to remain on the changing dynamics of our environment, the expectations of our citizens, and the global community. Um, it's quite a, an interesting development, but what are the implications of this for the forthcoming APC presidential primary? We have joining us on the breakfast this morning to discuss this, Nick Agole, who is a public affairs analyst. Um, Nick Agole, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me, and good morning to our viewers. Any surprises that the president um, had this meeting with the governors of the APC and from what we hear um, is, is, is about to, you know, uh, announce and possibly foist his, uh, his choice, his anointed successor on the party? Well, it doesn't, surprise, it doesn't surprise me that the president had the meeting with the governors under the platform of the APC because uh, that is the right thing for him to do. As the president of the country, he is the most senior official, government official in the APC. So he is the rallying point of the APC. And so for him to call the governors together so that they can strategize and have a game plan to win the 2023 election is in order. So I'm not surprised about that. But whether this meeting is the one at which the president expressed his views in terms of pointing out who he wants his successor to be is, is what is not in the public domain. From the statement, from the presidential spokesman, that is not clear. It could have happened within closed doors, but all we can do as members of the public is to have our fingers crossed to see what the next seven days will hold for the FTP. Hmm. All right, um, there are claims um, uh, from uh, the reports that we have that uh, the president has said um, to the governors of the APC that the party has an internal mechanism or policy or a, a culture of allowing the governors who have completed their terms, the two terms, select their successors. And that this even goes down from uh, his statement to the local government uh, level. Is that what you found by your observation to be the case as far as the APC governors in Nigeria are concerned? Yes, as, as they say, what is good for the goose is good for the gander. So if the president expresses the opinion that governors who are serving up their terms should be given the hand to anoint their successors, it could also be what he's thinking at the federal level. But I would say that's not democracy. The president has to give room for democracy to play. Because when he says that the party members should come together 
Philippo said, this anointing of candidates is what actually breaks that cohesion. You see, when people are a tyrant at either the governorship or presidential level or any level of election for that matter, and they see the process run in a very democratic, fair, free, and, 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 and transparent way, they are more to accepting the results than, contest, or than, than rejecting it or contesting it. But when a governor anoints a successor or a president anoints a successor, and the vast majority of the party members, including the aspirants, are not happy with the choice of successor, it becomes a problem for the party. So I would say that if the president is actually interested in achieving internal cohesion within the APC, and for the APC to fill candidates that will engender a sense of victory in the people, in the Nigerian electorate, as the president is saying, this anointing of successor is a risk. And the president has to manage that very well. All right. Um, as regards whether the president made this uh, statement in this last meeting or in the previous meeting, uh, we have a copy of the text uh, of that um, uh, the meeting with the Progressive Governors Forum. And it's a 12-paragraph um, uh, a, a, a statement the president made, or 12-paragraph speech uh, he gave. Um, and uh, on, on the fifth paragraph, he said that, um, as I begin my final year, or the final year of my second term as president uh, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and leader of the party, I recognize the compelling need for me to provide stronger leadership to the party under this transition process uh, and to ensure that it happens in an orderly manner. Um, he says in paragraph six, such leadership is required so that the party remains strong and united. It is also needed to improve electoral fortunes by ensuring um, that it retains power at the center, hold the great majority of in various legislative chambers and also gains additional numbers in state levels. Um, you know, so he goes on to talk about the culture of the party. Um, he says in paragraph nine, uh, as we approach the convention, I appeal to all of you to allow our interests converge our focus to remain on the changing dynamics of our environment, uh, the expectations of our citizens and the global community, yada, yada, yada. Um, and he talks about, um, uh, uh, you know, the consultation of the party and, and all that. So it seems that um, from this particular statement, he is talking about letting, allowing our interests converge, um, allowing, um, you know, me as the president to provide strong leadership for the party, to enable us be at the top and at the center as far as governance in Nigeria is concerned. So, I mean, this is, this may, some will say, is unambiguous from the president that he's saying, allow me to choose my successor. Yes, I mean, from the body language of by the president, uh, it looks like creating enabling platform for him to have a in yes, and then we have even in recent in the contest of the APC national, you know, there were all over the people. The president was faced as the president of the stand behind Abdullah Yadamu. Eventually, emerge. So, if the event happen in the past, are to play up for the president is to be able to detect. But number one, it is important to note that the president himself has Nigeria, the one year. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Julie, can you hear me, please? Uh, we seem to be having a, a difficulty hearing you. 
Um, if you're using your earpiece to talk to us or maybe a Bluetooth device, uh, please do well to detach it because it, it seems to be affecting uh, the quality of your audio. Um, can you hear me, sir? I can, I can hear, but I'm not connected to this device. Okay, 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 all right. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll have to call you back um, in a matter of just seconds. So please stand by um, uh, your phone so we can place that call to you and uh, we'll be continuing the conversation once we do that. All right, um, whilst we're trying to reestablish contact with our, our guest, um, um, let's just go over the president's speech uh, one more time uh, before he comes back. But um, we also would like to inform you the governors after a meeting uh, with the president uh, had their own meeting as well. Uh, uh, one of the governors told uh, the reporters who were waiting to hear from them and that the members of the Progressive Governors Forum could not agree on how to implement uh, the president's request. This is what he was quoted as saying, quote, we believe the president has not settled for any particular person. Of course, he didn't give them a name. And that is why some governors felt the best thing to do was to nominate two of us, one each from the North and South, to the president for consideration. They want to nominate two of them, two governors, one each from the North and one from the South uh, uh, to the president for consideration. This is according to a source uh, who was part of that meeting. The source said many Northern governors, however, argue that no Southern governor could defeat Atiku Abubakar, uh, who is a PDP presidential uh, candidate in the presidential election. So the North should be given the preference. Here we go again. Now, according to the source, this is quoted by Premium Times. I need to state that clearly. Um, the source that they are citing said that this stance of the Northern Progressive Governors or the Northern APC Governors angered their Southern counterparts. They were angry and furious of that. Now, it says that some of the Southern governors uh, also argued that nominees that do not have, uh, the nominees do not have to be state governors, uh, the ones that they should pitch to the president. Uh, this position is believed to have been pushed by governors loyal to some Southern uh, uh, presidential candidates, such as Vice President Yemir Shibajo and former Lagos State Governor uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Now, since the governors could not agree, uh, they resolved to end the meeting and reconvene at 8 p.m., uh, which they did. Um, do we have Nick Agule back on the line? Yes, I am. I am here. All right. So, Nick, um, you, you, I'm sure you heard that report from Premium Times uh, regarding the the uh, initial, the first meeting the governors had after meeting the president, and this uh, idea of pitching one governor from the north and one governor from the south and suggesting those names to the president, uh, and then the northern governors say, no, there is no candidate from the south who can match the power. Uh, and the pedigree of Atiku Abubakar. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, uh, the, the gamemanship the game for the 2023 election is playing out. Uh, the, I believe the APC played a waiting game on the PDP to see where the PDP will pitch their presidential candidate. And it has emerged that they pitched it in the north through now, the APC can go either of two ways. The first way is to match the PDP by picking a northern presidential candidate, or the APC can decide to pick a candidate from the South. Hoping that uh, they will be able to get southern votes and then be able to split some of the northern votes. So uh, these games are going to be fully played out in the next one week when we know where the APC has done. But if the APC, let us look at the scenario of the APC picking a northern candidate. If you look at the APC presidential asylum field now, I think the strongest Northern candidate is the Senate president. So let us say the APC decides to go with the Senate president. Of course, what is going to happen is that both the Senate president and Atiku Abubakar will split the Northern votes. It will then become who is able to take the majority 
of the seven vote that is going to carry the vote. That's one scenario. Let us also look at the scenario to see now pick the presidential candidate. Let's say they go with Osibaju, or Amej, or any of those. What will happen is, I think we will back the majority of the but that alone gives him the perspective. Because that is exactly what Larry was for three elections. He was speaking of it consistently with people, but he was not. Because you can't win with him. President Buhari was able to get the that is what made him. So, if I think that people have to win a substantial in the South, in the process, probably we're looking for an election where one of the days would have declared this is what is put out in the middle of the world. Right. You know right. The, the, the person. All right, uh, Nick, Nick uh, we're still having problems with that connection, but uh, let's see if we can push a few more questions through. Um, are, you, are you saying that uh, the APC cannot defeat the PDP if they don't select or elect um, the, uh, a, southern, a northern presidential candidate? So if they go for, say, someone from the south like uh, Rotimi Amechi or um, Bola Chiribu or um, Yemi Oshibajo, that um, they cannot defeat the PDP? Is that what you're saying, Nick? So, what are There are eight months to when the, when the ballots will be. Anything can happen. Even the candidates, some of them can stay within this period. But at the the APC is a southern candidate to win the election. How is that possible? It is possible only to start them both the United. And when the president comes, we need to have your political staff to come together and vote this African state. That will then match not vote that people to get to the north, then it will depend if he is able to make the state. Not the state. That, that may determine a bit. So, it is the strategy that the APC, APC can win this election, APC can win this election, it's on how they are their strategy. Um, so the, some of the school of thought, and we had an um, analysis on a, a newspaper review segment um, who also, you know, told that line that um, uh, incumbent executives who are in their final term uh, usually would have a lesser influence and lesser um, uh, power, ability to dictate um, who becomes a successor simply because they are about to leave and um, those who... Uh, uh, go to be part of that process. Do not necessarily need to be loyal to them because uh, their time is up. Um, do you do you, do you share that view? Uh, so, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can, can you hear me, Nick Agule? I can hear you. All right. There, there is a school of thought that um, uh, incumbent executives who are in their last term um, would have a lesser influence and lesser power. You know, and then those who are around them, those who are part of the process to elect their successor, um, can decide to disobey them, go against them, to not be loyal, and to um, go whichever way they want to go, simply because uh, this incumbent executive, in this case the president, is in their last term and will be leaving office after that. Very possible. Very possible. If the people believe that, Incumbent is about to do something. 
and only a matter of going to read any part of it. What that means of it? You can go again and have a mind of it. That is why it's a uh, game's mind. It's very difficult to you never can tell what to do. And all we can is to make the connection. But the real game play in seven days, because we know what the APC will teach their test in terms of possibility. All right. We are going to start. Of course. All right. Uh, uh, Nick Agule, I want to thank you very much for your time. Um, uh, you reached us uh, all the way from Abuja. I appreciate your time and your expert analysis. Thank you very much. I'm happy. Thank you. We sincerely apologize for uh, the poor quality of that audio connection. And, uh, of course, um, we'll make sure that uh, uh, we work with that. Uh, when we return, we look at um, what happened in Abia State. Um, the Methodist Church of Nigeria and the prelates of that church have revealed that uh, the sum of 100 million naira was paid to the abductors of the prelate, his chaplain, and the Methodist bishop of Uweri before they were released. Now, this is contrary to what the Abia State Governor, Oke Zekbazu, had revealed in a statement he released before the press conference of the prelate. Look at that. Uh, some of the claims made by the prelate and implications for the overall security situation in the country. Please stay with us. <laughs>